Today's episode is brought to you by Domain.com. Welcome back to Behind the Scenes of Real Gone. I'm Seth Worley, the writer and director of Real Gone, and today we're going to burn this mother to the ground. That's right, we're talking about the building fire, which is one of the most visual effects heavy scenes from the film, mainly because a building is on fire. Obviously, it was not really on fire on the day. We had fog machine, we had lights, but we did not have flames for obvious safety reasons. So obviously our plates were basically Darren staring up at a blank window. So once I brought these shots into After Effects, the first thing I did was I did a very rough mask around Darren. It was an inverse mask, so it was actually erasing Darren from the shot. This way I could track the shot and the tracker would not pick up any of Darren's motions. So once I have that, I'm able to create a bunch of nulls and solids based on the tracking points that the camera tracker picks up of the windows in the, on the building. And I'm able to basically drop several solids into the shot and using masks and such, assign those solids to always stay on the windows. I'm gonna use these as masks over my fire layers and burn mark layers. So once I have all this stuff, I'm basically setting myself up to start dropping in all the fire and fun stuff. But once I have the camera tracked, I have my window masks, then I'm able to start bringing in elements. And I started with the burn marks on the building. This is actually one of the things that kind of sells the shot the most. It's one of those little details, burn marks all over the sides of the building and around the windows. These are just textures that come with Action Essentials 2, uh, Video Copilot's awesome stock pack. And basically using the window masks I had before as track mats, and inverted track mats, I'm able to drop these burn textures all around the building and put them exactly where I want them. So then I'm able to drop in my smoke next. I'm able to accomplish this using these smoke files as well as my window masks. Then it's time for fire. The majority of this fire came from Rampant Design Tools' amazing fire pack. This is some of the best fire out there. And I found something that really sold and was very convincing was there were basically three main layers of fire. There was a, what I called a background layer of fire, which is basically where I dropped the fire in and I actually pushed it back in the Z-axis layer. So it was a little further back and so you get some parallax as the camera tracked along and you saw it kind of pass in and out of frame behind in those windows. And what I called my foreground fire was basically fire that was in the window frames. And part of the Rampant Design Tools pack are these flames that are basically built for like basically window frames or any kind of, you know, side of a building or hard edge sides or corners of things. And so I was, it was, I was able to drop those in, line them up with the windows and have them stay there. So it looked like you had this fire around the edges of the window. Then the third category of fire that I had were these big plumes of fire at the top of the window frames. I saw this in a lot of reference photos uh, and video that I looked just on YouTube, Googling building fires and such. You saw that most of the fire coming out of these windows was coming out of the top of the window frames and large, you know, plumes of fire. So to create that, I basically did this, this kind of round curved mask on the bottom of these fire layers and then kind of going out as it goes up and around. So it's creating kind of these oval shaped masks around the fire. After that, I had to add some heat distortion and turbulence. And for that, I just used the built-in turbulent displacement filter that's in After Effects. I duplicated my background layer and did another really dirty rotoscope job around Darren. It's not perfect because I'm impatient. If there's motion blur and you distract people, with huge flames, you might be able to get away with it. I basically just wrote it out Darren so I could place him over everything and have him in the foreground, especially as he passes frame. And then the last thing I did uh, that I found really sold it was I used, once again, uh, Overlight, a great plugin from Red Giant Universe, uh, to create some very subtle flaring and light leak kind of looks. It just adds some naturalism to the shot uh, when we filled it with so much digital stuff. And that's how you build a fire. And this is how you hand it off to Ryan to do sponsor time. You know I love me some domain.com and use them to register all my domains, but now they got something dot .club goodness. Dot .club is universal and understood globally, and it's perfect if you're building a new business site or naming your film startup, because if you think about it, any business or new idea really is sort of a club. The internet is all about community and collaboration, which makes dot .club perfect. Go to domain.com slash club to register your dot .club domain. They're only $9.99 a year, and thousands of great options are still available, and of course, Make sure you enter the coupon code FILMRIOT to save 25% off your order. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Alright, so we've got fire, now we need fire engines. This is perhaps the dirtiest visual effects shot in the whole film. Meaning, it's so hacked up and so amateur the way that I did this, you are going to feel so good about yourself. And so bad about me. So on the day we shot two plates, one of Darren in frame acting it out and then heaving his body outward 
uh, pretending the fire engine hit him. And the second plate we got was the same shot, just with no Darren in it. This was a manually operated shot. It wasn't on the center drive motion control system or anything. So they didn't match perfectly, but it gave me the visual information I needed. Once we had that, what I basically did was I camera tracked the first plate and then I took a still from the second plate and dropped it into that first shot with the camera track so that its movement matched the movement of the first shot. So we're always getting that camera move from the first shot. And I roto Darren out and I immediately animated Darren the second he starts throwing his body forward. I animated that roto version of Darren to uh, fly out of frame at kind of uh, messing with rotation and positioning. And he flies out quick enough where I can put motion blur on it uh, and it looks decent. <laughs> So once I had that, then I brought in my fire engine. And I toyed with several different options for bringing this fire engine into this shot. One was to obviously work with 3D models, but those models were all either too expensive or too god-awful ugly. So what I ended up doing, which is kind of embarrassing, is I just bought a stock image of a fire engine in front of a white background. I cut that white background out of the shot, so it just had the fire engine. And then I animated that fire engine to whoop, right in the frame and hit Darren. It took about half a day of trial and error to get it looking just right because I wanted it so, to pull up in the shot and stop. And any vehicle that stops, you get that inertia, that rock back and forth. And it was hard to get that with this image without it looking rubber bandy. It basically looked terrible for half a day and then all of a sudden it looked right. And that's just how it goes. You just keep trying and trying and suddenly it just looks right. So once I had that motion, one little thing I did to kind of help it not feel too two-dimensionally was I duplicated the layer, cut out that mirror on the side. I rotated it outward so it was sticking off the fire engine at a different axis than the rest of the engine was on. So when it did rock back and forth, you get a little bit of parallax seeing that mirror move at a kind of different rate than the the rest of the fire engine does. But to show you how terrible I am, what a hack I am, I didn't go to any trouble to erase the mirror from the first layer of the fire engine. So you look at it and you're like, why does that fire engine have two rear view mirrors on it? Uh, don't worry about it. It's a special fire engine. Plus, what do you know about fire engines? You're not a fire man. Finally, I brought in some dust from Action Essentials 2. I added some dust popping off of Darren as he flies out of frame and some dust coming off the ground and some dust coming off the fire engine. Dust always helps. It doesn't matter what your shot is, just throw dust in it. So then once I had that, I dropped in No Light Factory for the for some headlights and the siren lights, and that really helped sell it a lot. And I always like to add a little bit of camera shake whenever anything big happens in a shot like that. Just a little bit of jitter right as the fire engine hits him. And so then finally we had a shot that looked way better than I could have ever dreamed it would look. Don't forget, the Real Gone Digital Download Pack is available on the Triune Store now. There's so much cool stuff in this. Go get it. If you haven't gotten it already, I don't understand. What is it you want in life? I'm giving you everything. Seriously, it's really good. You should get it.